There is a Mark Twain quote. It is better to keep your mouth closed and let people think you're a fool than to open it and remove all doubt. Hello, this is Mara Jade and I'm back with another video and the crew and cast seemingly are hell bent on removing whatever doubt may be remaining, whatever the fucking hell doubt there may be left surrounding Rings of Power. And what's the current example of this? The actor playing Ellen Deal claiming Tolkien never fleshed out these characters to the extent other characters were, namely the ones in Lord of the Rings. Tell us you don't know what the fuck you're talking about without telling us you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. But at any rate, let's just dive right into this article so the article and myself can just tear this shit apart. But at any rate, let's just get into it. Rings of Power actor Lloyd Owen, who plays Ellen Deal in the upcoming Prime Video series, recently claimed that author J.R.R. Tolkien did not fully flesh out his character and others as much as he did characters in The Lord of the Rings. Owen spoke with CBC, telling the outlet, The exciting part for me is that there are these signposts on the way that Tolkien has written, but he hasn't actually fleshed out these characters to the extent that other characters are in The Lord of the Rings books. This harkens back to the sheer audacity from showrunners claiming that they were going to be taking clues and so forth and connecting them like stars and constellation to tell the story Tolkien never wrote. As if Tolkien only really left clues here and there like signposts for them to follow. You know, granted, Cimmerillion didn't come out until after Tolkien's passing because it was left up to his Tolkien children, Tolkien's children, to piece together all of his notes. But guess fucking what? Lloyd? The characters were fleshed out. Tolkien was the consummate perfectionist. To the point. To the fucking point that he annoyed his publishers so much. Because all they wanted was to him to complete, when he was writing Lord of the Rings, to complete the work. And he kept going back and rewriting everything. Consummate perfectionist. So to say that, that there are these just these signposts? Fuck you, Lloyd. He continued, so just being given the opportunity to begin to imagine what he might be like, personify what he might sound like, the only thing in there that could be remotely excused is the what he might sound like because he's a fictional character. We'd have, we'd, other than his uh, portrayal in the, at the beginning of Fellowship of the Ring, we don't know what he sounds like. But we know what he is like. Owen then added, I'm just very excited where this character goes because he has to get to Middle-earth at some point, perhaps. We think, no shit, Sherlock. And forged the last alliance of elves and men, which I, we saw at the beginning of Fellowship of the Ring. That was the last alliance of elves and men. That's what marked the end of the Second Age and the beginning of the Third Age. So that journey arc is an exciting one to go on. And there he is with Gladriel in name only. Owen is either incredibly ignorant about Tolkien's actual writing, or he's outright lying in order to promote the show. I would lean in particular with the cast. The cast, they are incredibly fucking ignorant to the point where they don't bother to go and actually look into this. They just read a, read a script and go off of what the showrunners are telling them. The showrunners who claim to be fans of Tolkien, those fuckers, I would argue, are outright lying in order to promote the show. The showrunners, the creatives behind the scenes and so forth, the executives, um, producers and so forth, those assholes are the ones that are outright lying. The cast, just incredibly fucking ignorant and stupid. Ellen Deal is incredibly fleshed out as a character and the story is quite detailed by Tolkien in The Silmarillion. Remember, like the work that we thought this show was going to be based on and then, surprise, they have no rights to it. Elendil is first mentioned as the son of Amundil and the father of Isildur and Anarion, two sons. Elendil never had any daughters, but guess guess what they gave him and Isildur? They gave Elendil a daughter and Isildur a sister in the show. Tolkien writes, Amundil and Elendil were great ship captains, and they were of the line of Elros Tar Minyatur, though not of the ruling house to whom belonged the crown and the throne in the city of Armanelos. All right. Boom. Already starting to get fleshed out right there. Amundil was actually an advisor to Ar-Farazhan, the king of Numenor, before he came under the sway of Sauron and was summarily dismissed. 
After being dismissed, Amandil and his family would withdraw to the city of Romana. Our Farazan is right there in the center, sitting down. The one that looks like fucking Father Time. That's our Farazan. After our Farazan's plans to challenge the Valinor became known to Amundil, he set off with three of his aides in order to seek out Manwe in the hopes he could intervene and save men from the machinations of Sauron. However, before he left, he told his son to prepare to leave Numenor and to gather the faithful to depart the kingdom. And Elendil followed his father's advice, as Tolkien wrote. Elendil did all that his father had bidden, and his ships lay off the coast, east coast of the land, and the faithful put aboard their wives and their children and their heirlooms and great store of goods. And anybody who knows Tolkien knows that his faith, his Catholic faith, was very, very important to him. Very much in influenced his behavior and writing and so forth. And if you read the Cimmerillion, a lot of it, particularly early on in the text, reads a lot like the Old Testament and the Bible. And this right here, Noah's Ark, pretty much. I'm not, I'm not saying that to trivialize it. I'm saying like like knowing anything about Tolkien, you can see, you can see the inspiration there of, of his faith. But at the same time, it wasn't overt. It didn't bash you over the head with it. The story itself is about Numenor. It's about Amundil. It's about Elendil and Isildur and his sons Isildur and Amarion and so forth. To the point where it's like you're not realizing you're actually reading a kind of a tale or at least a version, so to speak, fantasy version of Noah's Ark. But that's how Mark's how much of a uh, consummate perfectionist and writer Tolkien was. Ellen Deal and his family would be spared death and destruction from the reshaping of the world when our Farazon and his Numenorean fleet were utterly destroyed by Luvatar, God, when they landed on the shores of Valinor. Tolkien wrote, But whether or no it were that Amundil came indeed to Valinor and Manwe hearkened to his prayer, by grace of the Valar, Elendil and his sons and their fit people were spared from the ruin of that day. Elendil and his sons would survive the cataclysm aboard nine ships and eventually found four kingdoms in Middle-earth. So Sildor is not just a sailor. Tolkien wrote, Elendil was cast up by the waves in the land of Lindon, and he was befriended by Gilgalad, Gilgalad, who led the elves in the last alliance of elves and men. Thence he passed up the river Lun, and beyond Arid Luin, he established his realm, and his people dwelt in many places in, in Eriador, about the courses of the Lun and the Baranduin, but his chief city was at Anumanas beside the water of Lake Nanuiel. Among the treasures of that Elendil and the surviving Numenorians brought to Middle Earth were the Seeing Stones or the Palantir, which we saw in Return of the King. There were seven in total, and Elendil took three of them. He set them in towers in Amun Barad and upon Amun Sul and in the city of Anumanas. In the tower of Amun Barad, Elendil would gaze out over the sundering seas when the yearning of exile was upon him, and it is believed that thus he would at while see far away even the tower of Avalon upon es uh, sorry, Eresia, where the master, t master stone abode and yet abide. As Owen alludes to, Elendil plays a significant role in the last alliance of elves and men. Following many years after their flight from Numenor, Sauron would reveal he had survived the destruction and let his presence be known as he rekindled the forges at Mount Doom and Mordor, and eventually led his forces against Minas Ithil, taking the city and destroying the White Tree of Isildur. Elendil would create the last alliance with Gilgalad, where they marched east into Middle-earth, gathering a great host of elves and men. They would lead their army against Sauron and face him on the battle plain that lay before the gates of the Black Land. You know who also, who also was uh, at the last alliance of elves and men? Elrond, not Warrior Princess Gladriel, that Rings of Power is depicting, Elrond was. He was a commander. Not a fucking cunning architect like they want to describe him as in Rings of Power. The day would be theirs as they drove Sauron and his forces back into Mordor. From there, they laid siege to Sauron's stronghold for seven years with Tolkien riding. They laid siege to it for seven years and suffered grievous loss by fire and by the darts and bolts of the enemy, and Sauron sent many sorties against them. Finally, Sauron would wade into the battle, again we see this at the beginning of Fellowship of the Ring, and he wrestled with Gilgalad and Elendil, and they both were slain, which we saw, at least with Elendil. And the sword of Elendil broke under him as he fell. 
but Sauron also was thrown down, and with the hilt shard of Narsil, Isildur cut the ruling ring from the hand of Sauron and took it for his own. Alright? Sauron's not dead at that point. Spoiler alert. Because his soul, his essence, is tied to the one ring of power. Tolkien would not only detail the story of Ellen Deal and the Silmarillion, but he would also provide it to Milton Waldman in letter 131 that he wrote to him in 1951. Shocker. Lord of the Rings author wrote Ellen Deal, a Noachian figure who was held off from the rebellion and kept the ships manned and furnished off the east coast of Numenor, flees before the overwhelming storm of the wrath of the west and is born high upon the towering waves that bring ruin to the west of the Middle Earth. He and his folk are cast away as exiles upon the shores. There they establish the Numenorean kingdoms of Arnor in the north, close to the realm of Gilgalad, and Gondor about the mouths of Anduin further south. Okay. Okay, he writes it in two other letters, which I'm I'm going to share the link to this article in the description, so if you want to read them, you can read so at your own leisure. But again, not fleshed out, right? Not fucking fleshed out. Clearly, Ellen Deal's role is quite fleshed out in Tolkien's works. He plays key roles in the downfall of Numenor and the last alliance of elves and men. It is also abundantly clear how he gets to Middle-earth and what he does upon arriving at Middle-earth. So what do you make of Owen's comments? Incredibly fucking ignorant. But again, if you seem hell-bent on removing any doubt whatsoever that any may be left of how much of a fool you are, keep opening your mouth, Owen. All the cast, keep opening your fucking mouths. You just tell the world, again, yet again, that Rings of Power is not Tolkien's work. It is nothing to do with Tolkien. It is in name only. Because not only do you have canonical characters that are bastardized, much like Middle-earth in its entirety is, but non-canonical characters. When you have how many characters introduced in the Cimmerillion, Unfinished Tales, and the history of Middle-earth, you wouldn't have, if you had the rights, actually generally had the rights to those works, you wouldn't have had to add non-canonical characters. And if you had all had any, any respect for the Tolkien fandom and for yourselves as creatives, you would have turned it down. You would have turned it down saying, I can't do justice to this work because all I have our access to are the appendices. And what, what the hell can I do with those? I can't tell any stories with those. I can't do any justice or faith to the lore established by Tolkien and Middle-earth. I can't do any of that. But you have the narcissist in control. You have the greedy bastard Jeff Bezos in control who wants to emulate the popularity of Game of Thrones for his own greedy purposes. Not because he likes Middle-earth. Not because he likes Tolkien. No, because he wants to have his own version of Game of Thrones to, so Amazon can rival HBO. Jeff Bezos... Stick with what you know, and that's Amazon, if at all. Take your phallic head and phallic-shaped rocket back to space, because it does not fucking belong in Middle-earth. But at any rate, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Do you agree with this actor, Lloyd Owen, who's playing Ellen Deal? Do you disagree with them? What are your thoughts on everything that's transpired so far with the cast and crew of Rings of Power? Again, are you watching it? Are you not watching it? Uh, are you still on the fence? Are you going to give it the first episode a chance? Let me know all that fun stuff down in the comments. I will be live tonight on Twitch. Going back to Metal Gear Solid 5. I'll be dressed as cosplaying as Quiet from the game. So I'll be starting that about 7.30pm-ish Eastern. So come tune in for that. Jade underscore Fire is my Twitch name. Tomorrow I'll be playing Destiny 2. Wednesday will be the Cringe Factory live stream I do on YouTube. Thursday will either be... Naraka Blade Point or Aliens Fire Team Elite, depending on if someone who wants to play Aliens Fire Team Elite is available. And then Friday, if I do stream at all uh, on Twitch, it'll be most likely in the afternoon time frame because I won't be able to do anything in the evening because I have to get up early both Saturday morning and uh, Sunday morning. So that is my tentative schedule right now for streaming this week. Again, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. This is Mara Jade. Catch you on the dark side and... Keep opening your mouths, you fucking fools.